Next up, secant, secant segments. So here we go again. We have our secants that are intersecting outside of the circle. And what's formed here, what we're going to actually deal with are the lengths of the segments, whereas in the previous video we dealt with angles and arcs and things. So here's the rule, right? You want to immediately sort of train yourself to go to the point of intersection. And we're going to say that the, the uh, segment that's closest to that point of intersection, multiply that by the entire secant. So in these colors, it's yellow times blue. Set that equal to this little segment that's closest to the point of intersection times the whole secant. Alright, so again, it's the little piece times the whole thing equals the little piece times the whole thing. So let's do a few examples here. Number one. So here we go, we want to start with, just pick one of the, the secants, doesn't really matter, let's start with that one. So I'm going to go, alright, the point, the segment that's closest to the point of intersection times the entire segment, the entire segment is the sum of these two things, which is 7 plus x equals the segment that's closest to the point of intersection times the whole segment. The whole segment is 14 down here, 8 plus 6. So here we go, we're going to distribute. We get 49 plus 7x equals 60 plus another 24 is 84. We're going to subtract 49 from both sides. So we get, let's see, 84 minus 49. Let's do it the old-fashioned way here. 35. Looks good. We'll divide by 7. X is 5. <clears throat> Alright, common mistake. It's always worth mentioning some of these. A common mistake that I see a lot in this lesson <coughs> is for students simply to say 7 times X is equal to 6 times 8. It's not true. Don't do that. Also, some people tend to start with with the wrong piece. They'll say x times the quantity 7 plus x is equal to 8 times 14. They'll start with this segment instead of the one that they should be starting with, the one that's closest to the point of intersection. So be careful with some of those, those really uh, common mistakes that I see a lot. Number two. Might be a good time to pause this, try it yourself. We're going to go to that point of intersection, we're going to say 8 times, times the whole thing. The whole thing is 8 plus this. So it's 8 plus 3x plus 1 equals 7. 7 is the side that's closest, little segment that's closest to the point of intersection, times the whole thing. 7 plus 4x plus 1. We've got to do some uh, simplification. We'll go inside our parentheses. 8 plus 1 is 9. Inside our parentheses, 7 plus 1 is 8. We're going to distribute. Distribute. So we get 72 plus 24x. 56 plus 28x. We have variables on both sides, so I'm going to leave the, the variable expression with the larger coefficient where it is. I'm going to move the other one over. So I'm going to subtract 24x from both sides. That leaves me with 72 equals 56 plus 4x. Get the 56 over to the left by subtraction. That'll give us 16 is equal to 4x, x is 4. Cool, and you can check that, of course, by 
plugging four back in here and in here to see if it works. I'll let you do that on your own. Number three. Number three is a little bit more challenging. Let's see here. We want to go to the point of intersection, say eight times the whole thing, which is 21, is equal to x times the whole thing, which is x plus 17. Cool. Uh, that's 168 equals distribute now. We have x times x is x to the second power x times 17 is 7 is 17 x so this is what we call a quadratic we want to get all the terms on one side so I'm going to move I'm going to simply move that positive 168 to the left by subtraction that leaves me with a zero on the left and now we need to factor it right? I'm, I'm assuming you guys since you're in geometry class you're pretty good at algebra if not you need to get some help with this factoring but all we're trying to do here is kind of like figure out what binomial products well, binomials will multiply together to get this thing. This is sort of like the opposite of our FOIL method, first outer inner last. So the first terms are x times x. If I multiply those two together, it'll give me this term. All right, and then I go to 168 and I say, all right, what numbers, what are the factors of 168? And I start listing them. So you list those factors, da 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 da. -da and you come up with a pair hopefully that adds or subtracts to 17 and let's see I would say it's probably going to be uh, let's see, 168 is there a 7 in there 7 times 24 there we go 24 and 7 uh, so this is in the top, in the quadratic it's positive, negative, which means in the bottom I'm going to have a mix. So if the middle term is positive, the bigger number down here will have a positive next to it, and that will be negative. Zero product, pro well first of all let's check that. Let's check to make sure that this is the correct factorization. To check that, of course, we're just going to do first times first, outside times outside, inside times inside last times last and combine like terms and sure enough I get exactly what I want alright so we have now we have the zero product property this is saying that we'll set both of these equal to zero and just kind of work on them separately so x is negative 24 and positive 7 those are both solutions to that quadratic but keep in mind that we're actually dealing with real life stuff so sometimes real life has restrictions on it we can't use negative 24 in here because that would give us a negative length you can't have a negative length so that would be something that we would call an extraneous solution number four alright here we go 6 times 10 is equal to this segment. I'm going to write it like this. A little easier for me to see for some reason. Negative 4 plus x is the same as x minus 4 times the whole thing. The whole thing is negative 4 plus x plus negative 2 plus x. <coughs> Alright, so this is 60 is equal to x minus 4, and then we got to simplify this. x plus x is 2x minus 6. Alright, so here we go. We have to foil this guy. We have to foil this guy, and we're going to go 60 equals 2x squared. I'll go a little faster here. I assume that you know how to do some, some basic algebra. Combine those O and I terms. Subtract 60. We want to get all the terms on one side. And that's our quadratic. If you're struggling on how to solve these quadratics, look up a video on quadratic equations.
solving quadratic equations by factoring. Uh, you can also use the quadratic equation, or quadratic formula rather, or like your calculator or something. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that there's a GCF. So I'm going to take a 2 out of all the terms. And I think I made a mistake here. You probably caught that before I did. 24 minus 60 is negative 36. Cut that in half. And we get negative 18. So now we're trying to factor this little guy. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to 18 and add or subtract to 7. So it's 2 and 9 minus and plus. And if you want to check that before you proceed, you certainly can. Use the zero product property again. Branch out, set both of them equal to zero. We get negative 2 and positive 9. Remember, we're dealing with real life lengths. So you really can't have a negative. So your only answer is going to be 9. Again, a negative answer would be called extraneous. See so if you put that back up here, negative 2 minus 2 would be negative 4. Lengths of something can't be negative like that. So, so there you go. There were a couple examples on secant, secant segments. Moving forward, we're going to start talking more about tangents. We'll do four videos on tangents.